Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. Um, it's safe to say that this summer has been characterised by bad weather. You're joining us in a storm at the moment, um, but it's not raining, so we thought we'd come out. Um, and it's bulb time, which is amazing. I can't believe how quickly this last year has gone. Um, I made a very similar video this time last year. Uh, yeah, just can't believe how quickly that's gone. So I'm going to show you what I've ordered and obviously looking at bulbs isn't particularly interesting so I'll show you photos of what the flowers will look like too and I'll show you where they're going to go in the garden and what that might look like. Um, so in here we have over a thousand bulbs that I've ordered from the wholesalers and um, I think this is the bulbs that I felt were the most important this year and the ones that I wanted to spend my money on um, but I probably will also buy more once they get reduced into the autumn and winter. I do plant these from end of September right through to December. I find it really helpful to have something to focus on in the winter and so even though people do advise planting them in autumn I do go into winter just because I find it benefits me and things will still flower it might just be a, bit, a little bit later and that's fine. Um, so I'll just pull these out and we can see what we've got and I can't really remember everything that I've ordered so it'll be a bit surprising for me as well um, but let me know if you're going to be planting any bulbs in your garden and what you're going to be planting because I would love to hear about it. So first of all we have woodland anemones and these are anemone nemorosa alba so a white woodland anemone. My plan with these is to naturalize them in my mini meadow in the grass. Um, I don't have high hopes for them because they are something I tried to plant last year and one or two of them flowered and I think last year I put hundreds in and basically nothing happened. I did soak them beforehand um, but I don't know, something went wrong. I'm going to try again and if it doesn't work then I'll probably try and plant them in the green instead which is when they're already sprouting and got leaves on so you know that they're going to work. Um, so I've got 250 of those. Next up I've got snakes head fritillaries. Uh, same story with these, they're going to go in the mini meadow and I started introducing these to my mini meadow last year, you might remember if you watched the video. and mixed success with them. I'd say most of them didn't flower but a good amount did and because I put a couple of hundred in I had about 30 to 50 flowers I think, probably closer to 30, it wasn't a lot. So again these are something that I have had limited success with but when they do flower I absolutely love them so I'm willing to put more in um, at the chance that I'll have a few more flowers this year and hopefully they'll naturalise. Because I don't mow the lawn they, they get time to, to drop their seed and naturalise a bit but I'm not patient enough to just let them naturalise, I want to keep adding the bulbs. Next up we have Narcissus Ice Follies and this is a daffodil that I grow loads of in the orchard. Um, I plant this in the grass, in the raised beds, it's just one that I really like. It's a big tall um, flower with kind of pale, um, pale yellow edges and then a, a soft creamy yellow in the middle but it's one that I have had a lot of success with and I really like and I want to continue building a stock, stock of this in the orchard. So I think we have 25 per bag. I'm going to say we probably have about 100 to 150 of these. Um, that will become clearer as we continue to take things out of the box. But disappointingly some of these are mouldy already and I have only just received them. Um, so... I do buy these from the wholesaler, uh, makes them a lot cheaper than buying them from the garden centre. Um, next we've got Crocus Pickwick, you'll know this is a favourite of mine and it's one that I naturalise in the grass. Um, I started planting these about three years ago and I put 800 or 600 in the lawn down there. Um, and last year was the first year we had a bit of difficulty with them, so they do return every year. Um, and then on their third year of flowering we had a rabbit come along and eat the tops off all of them. So I didn't mow that area for a really long time in the hope that the bulbs would be able to put a bit of new growth on after the rabbit had left um, and I think they did but I want to top them up just to be on the safe side because they are a favourite of mine. So Pickwick crocuses I think I'm going to say there's 25 per bag. I'm going to guess that we've got 50 to 100 of those. Um, have a delivery slip I can tell you exactly how many we have um, we have a hundred of those so 
After that, we've got Narcissus Pueblo, which is a smaller daffodil. I think it flowers a little bit later um, in the spring. And it's another one that I naturalize in the grass here. And it flowers at the same time as the snake's head fritillaries. So I have some nice snake's head fritillaries, um, some Narcissus, some um, primroses flowering at that time and then hopefully some woodland anemones will make it kind of a nice jumble of soft pastel colours in spring. But one of my favourite things to do is grow bulbs in the grass rather than in the borders. I think it's just such a, a good way of making use of a lawn and lawns don't typically provide loads of interest for people so if you can turn them into a mini meadow in spring that's my favourite. Next we have uh, Galanthus warrenaui. So this is a snowdrop. Um, I tend to grow two types of snowdrops. This one, it's cheaper, which was the only reason I bought it. It has a fresh green colour to the leaves rather than the snowdrops that we normally grow here um, have a kind of bluish tinge to the leaves. So what I found with this one is I like to naturalise it in the grass because the leaves match the colour of the grass so that while the foliage is dying, it doesn't stand out quite as much. Again, I'm gonna add those to the area in front of me and they flower earlier in the year. So it's just about prolonging the season of interest for as long as I can and having something flowering at the start of winter. So when it's feeling a bit miserable, you can come out here and have something to look forward to and give you that kind of hope that spring is coming. So Waranoi or Waranawi, we bought 200 of those. Okay, so now we're moving into irises, I believe. Once I get all these fritillaries out, I think there's a few more bags of fritillaries. Iris reticulata. This one is a new one to me. It's called Scent Sational. Um, so a pun. I guess it smells nice, but I was drawn to it for the colour. Hi, duckies. Um, I bought quite a lot of these because they are a very affordable bulb and they flower so early. I think they're super rewarding to grow. So this particular type, I bought 100 of these um, and my plan is just to put them in the new bed that I've got down by the duck house. Um, it was a bed that was full of bamboo and I only just finished clearing it away after four years um, this year. So I haven't got any bulbs in there. So the first thing I want to get in is some irises. If I'm really organised, I might order some more bulbs and do it in kind of a lasagna style. So I might have some daffodils in a deeper layer and then irises on the top. Um, but we'll see what time and money permits. So we have loads of those and I'm really looking forward to growing them. Another thing that I haven't showed you that I have already planted is um, some saffron crocuses and that's another new thing to me. I got them in the ground as soon as they arrived because it's uh, advised to plant them late summer um, so that they flower in autumn. So I did 150 of those and I put them in the greenhouse because I think it will be interesting to have some little um, pops of colour in there amongst the agaves and the cactuses. Um, we'll see how that goes but if it's successful I would love to do a really big crocus display in there. Um, if you follow me you know I'm all about really big crocus displays. So we'll see how it goes this year. It was just a little bit of a taster uh, and do subscribe if you want to see how those go. And the benefit is being able to harvest the saffron as well. It's not even something I considered because I just love crocuses so much as a flower. We have a mysterious brown bag, alliums. So this is Allium Mount Everest and this is something that I grow already but I noticed while I was rearranging these borders I stabbed quite a few of the bulbs and they're probably not viable now. So I wanted to top them up so in here we have 10 um, and it's not that many but they are massive bulbs um, and this is a really heavy bag. Um, the flowers are gorgeous white big flowers and then I like the seed heads as well. Really nice and tall, perhaps um, about a metre tall I think. Um, and there's something I would put way more of in if they weren't so expensive but for some reason allium bulbs cost a fortune so I only got 10 of those um, but I will still enjoy them very much. I think that is our first lot of bulbs. There's still loads of repeats in this box. You can see um, I haven't got everything out, but I have told you all of the varieties that I'm going to be starting with. And um, so I think we've got about 1,200 bulbs in total to begin with. Um, and I'll see where this gets me and I'll probably buy another load in about a month's time. Um, but I don't want to order too many at once, but it feels overwhelming. It has to feel achievable and something that you're going to feel motivated to get out here to um, plant. 
and I'm gonna get myself a head torch so I can work into the nights as it starts getting dark earlier here. It's getting dark at about half seven in the evening and you really, really notice those nights drawing in at this time of year. Um, but you may have noticed I hadn't ordered any tulips yet and I will eventually be doing that. Um, but that's something I prefer to go into the shops and have a look at because I think they're so exciting and I love seeing the colors. And I like to buy those um, into November time rather than super early just to stagger it a bit. I don't want to order everything at once. I've tried to put as many in that will perennialize as I possibly can. So I probably won't be adding very many to the borders up here. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that last year's display comes back. But I do have a cutting patch down there that I fill with new ones each year. And I like to grow the double petaled frilly varieties. Uh, maybe we'll try something new in there this year. We will see. Um, but that's another thing to look forward to. So make sure to give us a subscribe if you want to see the tulip bulbs we end up getting and how this is going to look in the spring. Um, I can't wait to show you, but thanks for watching and be sure to give us a subscribe if you want to see our garden develop over the months and years. Mm -hmm.